Hi everybody, today I want to take you on a tour of the Canvas theme editor and specifically helping those people who would like to add content to your CSS or your institution's JavaScript. How do you go about doing that? What are the steps? What does it look like? Now right now I'm in the beta version of Canvas and that's where I always start. Whenever I add something to our CSS, then I always test it in beta before I release it to the system. Now, in order to even access the theme editor, you're going to have to have administrative privileges in your instance. And you can find that in the global navigation window here, there's a button for admin. And when you're in admin, you can click on your account or your sub account, and you'll be able to access the theme editor this way. So here in the settings, I have themes and you may have various different templates. And so you'll want to access the theme that you want to edit. And you might have various sub accounts. For example, if you have different schools at your academic institution, then they might have their own unique themes. And today I'm just exploring one theme. And so I'm going to open the theme editor. And now this first tab here with the branding and the watermarks and logos and log on screen, you'll probably want to set that up with your canvas CSM. And this is a pretty high level decision to make knowing which colors are going to be themed for your institution. But today I want to go to this upload tab and we're going to look at the CSS file and the JavaScript file. So my institution, we already have some CSS and a little bit of JavaScript. And I can see that by clicking on view file and it's going to pull up this link. And essentially this is all of the CSS that we have running at our institution. And so I could download that too. I can right click and save link as, and then I can save the CSS to my computer. If you've made modifications to your CSS, then you would just click on select and it's going to ask you what CSS file you want to upload and it'll replace the existing CSS with your new CSS, which is why it's really important to be well organized and documented on your CSS. Now let me show you the two documents that I work with. And right now I just have them open up in Notepad and you can use any similar plain text program such as Notepad++, Text Wrangler, even Dreamweaver would work. But the gist is I work with two files. One is called stylesheet.css, the other is called stylesheettest.css. And if I'm ever going to make a modification to the CSS, first thing I do is I open up this test document, which is a direct copy of the original CSS, and I'll make my change right there. And so for my CSS, I like to have a lot of comments because I want it to be obvious for whoever's working on this file in the future that they know which section and any notes that I might have. And so I divide my sections this way. So this slash with the asterisk, and then I have an asterisk with a slash. Anything in between these two marks is known as a CSS comment. And you can put whatever you want there and it's not going to affect the CSS file other than you can see it when you pull it up. And so here's a section that I call shadows and I just decorated it like this. And then I have another comment right here. This is kind of like a table of contents that I created for this section of shadows. And I have five shadows that I've added to my institution's CSS. And one is called basic drop shadow, offset shadow, and you can see all of the categories here. So it's a list of shadows and here's the list. And then I use more comments right here to know that this is the basic drop shadow. And then I have the properties. And so the name of the class and then the CSS properties right there. And then I have another comment here, offset drop shadow. And these are the different properties. And if I scroll down here, I can see, okay, this is the end of the shadow section. And then I have a new section called scroll behavior. And this one's a lot shorter, but I have some comments and I have some properties right here. And then I have a closed right there. And so you can see how I organize this CSS. And so let's see, let's suppose that I want to add something. So I have this transition section here and I want to add a new transition. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to the bottom of right here and I'm going to just add to the bottom. And I'll go ahead and paste some code that I have. And this is a new transition and it's called underline from the center. And I have my various properties right here. And so I'm going to go ahead and save this copy. And I also want to make a note of what I call this class so that I can then do a test of it. So I'm going to copy that. We're going to hop back to the theme editor and I'm going to click select on the CSS file. I'll go ahead and look through my files and I have style sheet test right here. So I'll open that. And it's going to say, do you want to preview your changes? Yeah, you need to preview your changes before you can save the theme. So now the changes have been made and I can go ahead and test the changes on a page before I save the theme. I'm going to want to run that test. Okay, so now I'm on a test page 
Again, I'll note that I'm in the test installation and it says up here that I'm editing the theme editor. I can cancel or accept those changes. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and edit this. And I'm gonna take one of these buttons here, maybe this first one, and I'm gonna go ahead and copy that and paste it and then apply the new class. Okay, so this one, I just changed the class to hover, underline from center with the dashes there. I'm going to go hover, underline from center, go ahead and save that page and see if it made the change that I want. All right, so it looks like that animation worked. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a class of buttons and really test this out. Okay, I went into the CSS and just made a copy of this section here. So instead of hover fade, now I'm testing out my new interaction, which is hover fade from the center. And so I can see that, yeah, that actually looks good. So I've done this test. I can run back here and save the theme. And then I'll click on apply the theme. Now that I've tested that CSS in the beta instance and I know that it works, I'm ready to copy this over and apply it to the actual CSS. So I'm just gonna put that right at the bottom. I will go ahead and click save. And now I'm done with those CSS files. Let's hop back over to the theme editor. And again, you would access that by clicking on the admin and then you'd click on your account. And then within the themes, you'll click on which theme editor you want to edit. So I'm gonna open this theme editor and my CSS file is all ready. So I'm gonna click select. And this time, instead of uploading the test file, I'm going to upload the actual file because I copied it over to the real one. So let's go ahead and preview our changes. Now I went and grabbed those changes that I made in the beta course and right now I'm in a live course. And so I put those changes in here and then I can preview them. Looks like that interaction is working really well. And so I'm confident that that CSS is ready to go into production. I'm gonna go ahead and save that theme and then I will apply the theme. And now if I go into themes again, if I open this in the theme editor, then I should be able to see the upload. I'm gonna view the file. And if I scroll down to the very bottom, I can see that new file that I just integrated into the CSS. And with JavaScript, it's the very same thing. We actually don't have a lot of JavaScript that we're using. I just have one widget uploaded and we don't really do a lot with JavaScript, but the process would be exactly the same as what I just showed you with the CSS file. And last thing down below, you can see that there's also options to upload mobile CSS and JavaScript files, and that would be unique CSS and JavaScript for the students who are using the mobile apps specifically. If you have something specific for mobile applications, then this is where you would include that. If you have further questions, then go ahead and contact your Canvas customer service manager, your CSM, and they'll be able to walk you through anything else that you want to do. So that's how you can customize Canvas. So I wish you well in your CSS adventures. Until next time. Happy teaching and morning.